consumption plays a progressively bigger part in our lives than it did years ago. People now rely more on buying and step by step are becoming dependent on consumerism and materialism. Apparently, we can see that consumption is happening everywhere with no time limits. People's basic needs have become their desires and lives change upside down. Like so many others, I had become a slave to the IKEA nesting instinct. Uh, yes, I'd like to order the Erica Picari dust ruffles. By the course of time, people switched from real needs to artificial needs. They became unable to feel satisfied by real value and function of a good. We can see that clothes are not body protection anymore. Everyone pays attention to things which don't need so much of it. We are consumers. We are byproducts of a lifestyle obsession. Murder, crime, poverty, these things don't concern me. What concerns me are celebrity magazines, television with 500 channels, some guy's name on my underwear, Rogaine, Viagra, Olestra. There are many more factors influencing the growth of materialism, such as intensive advertising, creation of social media, and big shopping temples, easier access to credit, and strong brand images. Hello, I am Professor Freud, and I have developed a theory which illustrates the current situation. There is id and superego. Id is based more on impulse and is irrational, while superego is purely rational. In the past, it was there when we were satisfying our basic needs, while superego involved in actions such as big purchases. In the present, everything has changed, and even the big purchases are driven by the id. When you buy furniture, you tell yourself, that's it, that's the last sofa I'm gonna need. Whatever else happens, I've got that sofa problem handled. everything in that suitcase. My CK shirts, my DKNY shoes, my AX ties. A huge variety of goods has transformed our consumption choices to particular statements about ourselves, our personalities, likings, values, aspirations, and our way of handling social relations. Like a little coffee table in the shape of a yin-yang, I had to have it. The Klipsk personal office unit, the Hovatrek home exerbike, or the Ohanashov sofa with the string green stripe pattern. Even the Rizlampa wire lamps of environmentally friendly unbleached paper. I'd flip through catalogs and wonder, what kind of dining set defines me as a person? I had it all. People who have an incomplete self-feeling try to compensate it by acquiring symbols associated with a desired social identity. For example, teenager boys may use manly products such as cars and cigarettes to highlight their developing masculinity. I had it all. I had a stereo that was very decent, a wardrobe that was getting very respectable. I was close to being complete. Concluding all the mentioned theories, we can express them in terms of Maslow's hierarchy of needs. Basically, materialism means that things which were supposed to satisfy our psychological and security needs are now at the top of Maslow's hierarchy. We express our personality through things. Social opinion strongly maintains an idea that materialism creates happiness. But does it really? There was made many research in different countries to prove that people with higher material values tend to be less happy. So imagine yourself, when you buy a new product, for how long does it make you happy? But what can we learn from the movie Fight Club? Materialism does not create a higher satisfaction level for sure. So fuck off with your sofa units and string green stripe patterns. I say never be complete. I say stop being perfect. I say let, let's evolve. Let the chips fall where they may. The things you own end up owning you.